Has anyone here ever actually called into one of the FBI rewards for information on criminals and won the money? And what happened? My neighbor down the road growing up was always getting into trouble. One day someone robbed a gas station with a gun and accidentally shot the clerk, so he claimed, and the police didn't know who did it. After about a month, they offered up a small reward for information. The guy arranged to have his wife turn him in to collect the reward, because she would need it since he knew he was going away for a long time. Don't remember the full details but my mom called the cops on some guy who was featured on America's Most Wanted. Guy was on the run for several things I think but still took time out to get his tag renewed saint the DMV. Lawful evil. 10 years ago I'm working front desk at this third rate motel and I'm the only employee on property until 7am. So I get this report of an unruly guest and check it out. Dude's whacked out on something. Threatening other guests and I call the cops to remove him. On their way out they tell me he's got active warrants in another state. I don't think anything of until 3 months later I got a check sent to me at work from a sheriff's office 2 states over. Turns out the guy was wanted for a double murder and I got the reward when he was convicted. I felt pretty good about that. Not as similar, but when my mum was around 18 I'd say, she had a boyfriend who had seen a suspicious car full of people and driving quickly. I can't remember the other suspicious details. Anyway he went to the police with the number plate of the car and got a 500 pound reward, as the people he'd helped the police to catch were bank robbers. Bear in mind that this is the early 90s so 500 pounds is a lot of money. 500 pounds is still a frick ton of money. This is kind of related. When I was younger there was a bad drought in the lake I went to fish that was probably 10 feet below where it usually is maybe more, and I went to go fishing under a bridge with my stepdad. I got bored so I started playing in the rocks. I found an old pocket knife and a pistol, turned the pistol into the local police department and got a metal back from them and a letter where it was used in a case to convict a murderer. I don't really remember the details I was in 4th or 5th grade. Thank you for getting a murderer off the streets. Persicrisha69. My sister has a pretty weird hobby. She solves cold cases by helping match descriptions of bodies that have never been positively ID'd to missing persons matching the body's description. She's solved several cases and submits them to the FBI tip line. Twice now, she's gotten phone calls from law enforcement as a result, one from the FBI and one from a local police department. One had reward money tied to it from long, long ago. She turned it down. Both times, She's informed the agency calling that the missing person disappeared before she was 10 years old. That's her limit. She doesn't look at recent cases to avoid potential problems. And they just kinda shrug and move on. That's all. I would be proud to have Nancy Drew as my sister. Semi relates I guess. I made an anonymous tip to a local library about someone posting online about wanting to do something sexual in the bathroom of the library. Local police and FBI gave me a call on my actual number, not the one I used to call in the tip, and asked me a few questions. Turns out they set up a raid and caught some 19 year old who was trying to meet a 10 stroke 11 year old boy online. Got $500 and they offered to pay me to go on apps websites like Craigslist and such to find the same kind of people. Was pretty cool. Seems like the tip wasn't very anonymous. In college we had a drive by shooting on my block. The police showed up and asked all the neighbors if they had any information. I had just heard the shots from my house and wasn't able to help. A few days later I was walking home from class and I found a shell casing the in the grass near where the shooting was. I didn't want to touch it so I got home and called the police. I was very very specific about exactly where the shell casing was, and that I do not want the police to come to my door. The neighbors were pretty sketchy people and I just didn't want to be seen being involved. Well these freaking cops walked right to my front door and asked for me. I told them exactly where to find it again. They walked to the general area, looked for maybe a minute, then walked back to my front door and asked if I could show where it was. Got it. So I led them to shell casing while the sketchy neighbors stood on their porch and watched, looking very displeased. Apparently the fingerprints on the casing matched one of their suspects and he was arrested and went to jail. The cops stopped by a few months later with a $20 gift code to a sub shop. Only to find you murdered in your bathtub and now you haunt Reddit. When living in Minneapolis, 
I saw Craigslist ad looking for a roommate that specifically worked at Minneapolis Street, Paul International Airport and had a badge that allowed them to access beyond security. I alerted the FBI and Minneapolis police through their tip line. Never heard from either of them. Why isn't it called Minneapolis? I don't think we have such a reward system in Sweden but in the mid 90s when I was younger, around 4-5, my father used to be pro water skier. He and his friends used to train at a local lake and I was often with him there. One day I was on the pier while my father and the others were skiing when I saw the rainbow on the water by the pier. I told my dad about it and he of course understood that it was not the rainbow, but petrol oil in the water. No one knew where it came from so they started checking the boat for leaks but found none. After a while someone noticed it was coming from under the water, a few meters from land. They ended up calling the police who came there with divers. They found two cars, a few bags of jewelry, electronics, stereo, VHS player stuff like that, golf clubs, bags of clothes, and parts of a body in one of the cars. Everything had been laying there for a long time. The VHS player was old, like one of the first models released. The cars were also old. The police thought it was things that had been stolen and dumped there. I did not get to see the body, obviously. But apparently it was not possible to identify who it was or why it was in one of the cars. The police took everything they found with them when they left. My father and his friends were asked a bunch of questions about if they knew who could have put the stuff there but they had no idea since it had been put there in the 70s, long before they even started to train at that lake. I don't think they heard from the police again after that. The oil petrol came from the cars. Rust had made it so something started to leak. Before the police left, one of the officers told me I would make a fine detective someday. I remember being super proud of that and telling all my friends about but they did not believe me. Kinda related. My brother is a police officer on cold cases in Canada. He offhandedly mentioned seeing if xxx amount of dollars could get a witness of an event to actually share info on a murder from 15 years ago. I was rather startled about the amount and I said where does the budget for that money come from his specific organization uses money collected from crimes to buy information if it really looks like a specific knows information but won't spill. I was rather naive and assumed there was a line in their organizational budget for this. Just tell me who to point out, officer, so I can go spend this money. I called Crime Stoppers once. The local news released a video of someone violently robbing a store. They beat up the cashier pretty bad. I knew it the second the video started who it was. A guy I used to party with and had spent the night with a few times. The Crime Stopper folks gave me a number to write down to claim the money if he was convicted. I wrote it on my hand then washed it off accidentally like an idiot. It was on the smaller side, I think around 1 dollar k, but it would have made a big difference at the time. And the guy did end up getting convicted and is still in prison now. I'm sure a bunch of people called in, though, so I don't know how much I would have gotten. Anyone who grew up in my area who was around my age would have known the guy. I used to have a friend that robbed a place. We couldn't see his face on the video, but we saw his walk. It absolutely was him. One of my wife's co-workers received a substantial reward for turning into the so-called 20th hijacker, Zacharias Musawi. My stepmom got a $25 KFBI reward when she came across a girl who had been abducted, and her whole family was murdered. The girl had been held in the cabin next door to my parents' cabin for about 3 months. The guy who did it left her alone for a couple of hours and she escaped, in the middle of winter in a very cold area. My stepmom was walking her dog in a pretty isolated area and the girl ran up to her. She was obviously very disoriented and traumatized but stepmom helped her escape through the woods to a safe place and call the cops. There was a huge media circus, and although all the reward money, $25k from the FBI and $25k from a local business, was awarded to my stepmom, she concluded that since the girl had technically rescued herself, it was appropriate for the money to go to her. Apparently there is some rule that you can't get FBI reward money in a case where you're either the victim or perpetrator. So the money had to be accepted and then gifted back to the girl. In the end, the girl got the money and my step. Mum got a big tax bill that year because reward money is taxable. She got to be interviewed on national TV by Gail King though and, you know, helped save someone's life. So she's pretty okay with it. 
Long time ago, 20 plus years, a nearby bank was robbed at gunpoint. The article had a very good photo of the guy. Turns out, he was my sketchy neighbor. Saw him that morning, he was still wearing what was shown in the photo. Long story short, cops bust him, he goes away for a long hitch. They said a small reward is available. Told them to donate it to a nearby animal shelter. Everyone wins. Well, almost everyone. I've sent a few tips to the FBI over internet fraud over the years. Never gotten anything other than an automated response and certainly no rewards. Same. Stumbled across some sites and group chats of people selling all sorts of illegal crap. Tried to call it in and got told to submit online. Submitted online and never heard back. Tried again a few weeks later and still nothing. Figured they didn't care. There was a reward on a guy who was wanted for breaking in and stealing a few expensive puppies from a shop. I saw it on the news recognized him as this butthole who had bullied me in high school. So I was like oh heck yeah I am calling this in. Called and gave his name and address. They took the information thanked me said they would be in touch with a reward if it led to an arrest. Saw on the news he was caught. So I called them up and they told me they already had all his information and I wouldn't be getting my reward. Scam game. Just the satisfaction of getting the upper hand on your bully. I met a guy who was in town from overseas while he had family in the local hospital on extended stay. I talked to him for quite a while. Was a nice guy. Fast forward a couple of weeks. Someone with a very similar description was wanted for human trafficking. Same country of origin. Same apartment complex that he was staying. Reported to crime stoppers. Never heard anything. Could all be coincidental. Some might say, too coincidental. I so strongly doubt that there was family in the hospital. Oof. Not fb but my wife called in on a friend that was in the military and was suffering from PTSD. He texted her and said he was going to shoot up a military base. She emailed NCIS and sent in the text messages. They gave her $500. That's sad but she did the right thing. You just can't take chances when folks say stuff like that. A buddy of mine used to make quite a bit of extra money turning his customers into the police. He was an overnight clerk at the only 24 hour gas station in town. So at some point every drunk, druggy, never do well, and butthole came in. One night he's got a drunk regular mouthing off to his friends about how he caught a warrant for some stupid crap. But the cops were too dumb to catch him cause he was staying with his sister and driving her car. He thought to himself you know. I wouldn't mind if I never had to deal with Dimitri, the drunk butthole, ever again. So the first chance he gets he pops into the cop shop and asks if they are looking for a guy named Dimitri. Sure as crap, they are. So he fills them in on Dimitri staying with his sister and driving her navy blue Cadillac. He even manages to fork over the license plate, thanks to the gas station cameras. Pop goes Dimitri, and a check for $500 shows up in my friend's mailbox a month later. After that he'd hit the police station once a week to grab a copy of the Crimistopper flyers and call his new cop friends whenever he recognized someone. Not related to getting a reward but my sister's husband is a CPU analyst and works for the state and his job is help Leo catch pedophiles and such. My sister told me some what he does and I am impressed. He once helped catch a ring of pedos. I think 7 or 8 guys. So once he and I were deer hunting and I asked him about his job and he said he meets with some shrink twice a week because the stuff he sees, hears, reads is pretty messed up. He said on several occasions on the way home, he has to pull over so he can cry or scream or whatever. Far kids think he's a nerdy police accountant. I am extremely proud of him. Dang. That's serious. My college roommate is the specialist they being child victims to for questioning. She said you're really only supposed to do that job for a year or two and rotate out, but there's no one else to do it in our hometown. Crazy stuff. Sort of related, but one day I was browsing Facebook and came across one of those news bulletins from the sheriff's department in a neighboring county about a bank robbery that occurred shortly before the posting. They had a security camera photo of the robber but no leads on identity yet. I was like lol that totally looks like my friend's brother. I screenshot it and sent it to her and said is this your brother? It looks like him. She said yeah it did look pretty similar to him. Turns out it was him. No reward scenario, but it made me think of something neat. 
I had an uncle in the military that used to operate satellites. He told me a story once where they received an order for a satellite uplink in the middle of some large ocean. They were asking for an obscene amount of bandwidth and he even had to call his higher ups to make sure the order was legitimate for that ridiculous amount of bandwidth. The order came from the White House. He wasn't given any other information other than to provide the uplink. So he did. About a week later, it was announced all over the world that Osama bin Laden was dead. All we can do is speculate, really. Sounds to me like they uploaded bin Laden's body into the cloud. Worked at a small, local bank. A regular customer comes in and I greeted them by name. They hand their check and a note to me. Note says they have a gun and to hand over all the money in the drawer. I comply and as the customer leaves I push the emergency button. We had all of this person's info on file and the police caught them at home. Bank recovered the money. Person went to jail. And I got a small reward for catching them. I'm honestly curious how they expected that to turn out. I like that they had zero hesitation. Even after the reminder that you knew who they were. It doesn't relate directly to what was asked in the post but, around 4-5 years ago, I was checking the Facebook groups and OLX of Brazil to trade the phone I had. Found a guy selling an iPhone for parts. Something inside me made me feel an insane urge to message the guy about the phone. It was clear that it was stolen. The picture he had posted contained the message saying this phone was stolen. Please call number. I couldn't see the number because he had his finger over it. So I did the following. Messages the guy. Played like I was interested in actually buying the phone to replace parts of my iPhone 6. I had no iPhone to even start. But I said I needed to see the number in the screen to check if the phone was blocked on Apple website. And somehow he felt for the trap. Long story short. I contacted the owner of the phone. Who contacted his local police station because. The phone was stolen over 14 metro stations far from my area. We set up an investigation with the police and this is where it gets interesting. The sheriff of that division called me. Not on my personal phone. But on the phone of my grandparents house which is where I was staying. With no prior information about me. Not even my phone number. Sheriff. Hi. You are X right. Me. Hello. Yes. I am. Sheriff. Yeah. We are just testing our tracking tool. Anyway, let's set up a plan. I helped them making a plan to capture the guy who was selling the stolen phone. The operation happened three days after the call and the guy was arrested. I got a call from the sheriff after they arrested him. Turns out the whole division stopped everything they were doing to actually witness the arrested guy arriving at the unit. Turns out he had many many warrants and had been in jail three times. He had a warrant for robbing a place with a gun. And turns out his whole family was wanted for crimes of the same kinds he committed. Even his mother. He was sentenced for 7 years in prison. I still have the sheriff personal phone number whatsapp. And from time to time he talks to me to try to convert me into a cop. I know it sounds like a movie story. If you don't believe in it I'm fine with that. I have my grandparents and my father who witnessed the whole situation unfolding and this is already enough called crime check after seeing an escaped felon in my neighborhood. Dude got arrested by the local PD but I got denied the reward because the call was not taken by the right county. I only called because I happened to see him walking by my house. Could not have cared less about the reward. I never called the FBI for an investigation. I feel like I got a reward from them investing a case though. During a search they found three kittens. They didn't disturb them and continued the search of the area for three days. Two investigators realized the mother never came back. They were talking about it near my friend who worked next door in the plaza. He was interviewed already. He asked them if he could take them. They initially said no. He asked if they could bring them to him and they said okay. The FBI solved the case, made multiple arrests. My kitty is 11 years old now and absolutely one of the best friends I could ever ask for. I did follow the case. I could link the case story if anyone is interested. Kittens are not included in the story. I chased down a commercial truck hijacker. I saw him hijack a truck full of merchandise and cigarettes. He left the driver bloodied in the street, but he was otherwise okay. The hijacker didn't know much on how to drive a stick, so it gave me enough time to get to my car and try to follow him. I came across a police car cruising the neighborhood and flagged them down. I told them what happened, but they didn't seem to care. 
They turned in front of me in the direction I was headed as I continued to search for the truck. I suspected that it had turned down a side street. As we came towards a T in the road, the stolen truck turns in front of us headed in the opposite direction. The cops move a little to the side to allow the truck to make its turn. I turned my car sideways to block the truck and laid on the horn. I could see the two cops look at each other like, WTF. They sat there wondering what the heck I was doing, so I got out and ran toward the truck which spooked the hijacker. As he ran, I double checked the truck to make sure it would not move anymore. I saw a fake gun on the floor and a pipe wrench. I took the pipe wrench and proceeded to chase the hijacker. When the cops saw me chasing the hijacker, they got out and also started chasing him. I couldn't catch up to him, so I threw the pipe wrench at him. I didn't expect it to hit him, but I nailed him right on the head knocking him down. The cops caught up and arrested him. The hijacker had been wanted for 8 years worth of commercial truck hijackings valued at over $5 million in merchandise. I testified against him in court and he got 16 years in prison. The company that had been victim to his hijackings sent me thank you letter. No reward from them or their insurance company. Cop was on the take. Not me, and not for a reward, but my dad called once. I heard this story second hand from my mom years later. My dad confirmed but wouldn't really say much. My dad was an Air Force intelligence. If it has an actual name I don't know it. That's just always what my parents called it. And served in Vietnam. Shortly after he'd gotten out. He went to hang out at his favorite bar where everyone knew him. There were a couple new people that had started coming in while he'd been away. I guess one of them would always sit next to him and try to get chatty. But the questions they asked and their behavior attitude set off red flags for my dad. He called the local FBI office and ended up in a meeting with them, etc. I don't know what happened in the end, other than the guy he reported stopped coming to the bar. Beyond that, nothing else was said by my folks. Oh, just remembered. Another time in my early 20s, an old high school friend of mine I'd kept in touch with apparently went out from the navy. So one day we got a very serious and official knock on our door asking all about my friend, etc. We were clueless, but I heard from others that eventually they caught up with him. Dishonorable discharge, no pay, etc. People overestimate how hard it is to go AWOL. My father had a family friend who gave them their first jobs at his general store selling Christmas trees in the winter. That family friend joined the army and then one day just decided to go home and open a business. They never came looking for him. Only slightly related. At work I worked with this co-worker who did the bare minimum every day. Never washed his uniform etc etc. One day he came in and brought his computer. He said he had a failed part. I was helping customers as I do. I watched him install a new part mentioned to me not paying for it and take it with him. Never saw him pay for it etc. This OBV didn't sit right with me. I'm not a goodie to shoes or whatever but dude was a douche. Bragged about not paying. IDK and I just had too much respect for my manager. He was dope surprisingly for where we worked. He respected us and treated us like people. So I told my manager. Dude got fired and big they had kind of a if you see something you get rewarded. I got like $200 lol like 4x the part that he stole mayo. Honestly, it was probably worth it to the company to pay you that much. People like that, if left unchecked, can steal thousands of dollars worth of stuff before they're caught. For them, getting rid of him before he could do more damage is totally worth it. Back when you had to call a CC to get off on a large purchase they told me the card had been cancelled and to cut it up. Customer was okay about it but I got $50 from the CC company. In Canada we have the Crimestoppers program. It is cash rewards for tips that led to an arrest. When I was in high school my mom dated a guy on parole for a murder he'd committed in his teens. When he decided to skip town she reported his whereabouts. When the police picked him up they told him exactly who had given him up. The threats and stress that followed were unpleasant. She never got any reward. Frick the police. Not me but my brother. My brother is a real estate agent in Puerto Vallarta so he tends to see a lot of people. There was this guy that would frequently visit and owned property in one of the big golf courses. My brother happened to be browsing the FBI most wanted and seen a person that the FBI digitally rendered of what the person looked like now as he was over 80. 
and it was very similar to this person he would frequently see in the area. My brother got into contact with them and they asked for photos of the person and a little bit about who he was. My brother had to gather as much info of his schedule and the layout of the condos. So they made a plan and arrested him. If I'm correct he traveled to Guadalajara and that's where he was arrested. This was about 8 years ago. I turned my own sister into my state's most wanted segment on the news. She was caught on camera with someone else breaking the law. And I sent in a tip that she was using my Uber account so I could see where she was going after the fact. Then she came out to my house to hide out. And I let them know. Played it off as if they randomly came to check and see if I knew where she was. She needed to go to jail. And get some help. I received a check in the mail for 400 bucks a little while later. Not quite the same thing. But I once found a lost dog with a 3000 pound reward advertised. There are quite a lot of wealthy people near where I live. So reward offers for lost pets that high aren't uncommon. I used 1000 pounds to pay off my credit card and donated the rest to the local dog's shelter. Kind of related. One summer. Back in the mid 90s a bunch of us went to Blackpool UK for a long weekend. I lost the group in one of the massive, multi-level nightclubs and, as it was close to kicking out time and I hadn't pulled, thought I'd head back to our B&B. As I'm walking along some street a guy at the back of a car with the boot open asked me if I was interested in buying something. I didn't actually hear what he said. I was in my own little world. I look into the boot of the car and there is a shoebox missing its lid. Inside is a Beretta 9mm pistol. I recognized it immediately as I was a bit of a gun nerd back then and even had a pistol license at the time. I had an Astra Constable. Also in the box was a box of 50 rounds. No idea if it was a full box. I asked him how much he wanted for it and he said 200 quid or something like that. I showed him I only had a tenner in my wallet and that I'd go to the cash point on the main strip. I'd be back in 5 minutes. I head off towards the main strip and call 999 on the first phone box I find. Pre-mobile phone. Tell them all the details, the street name and even a partial plate of the car. I then just carried on my way to the B&B. I gave them my name and details but never heard back. No idea if they caught the guy or not. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.